next to the share screen. Hit the record button. All right. So now we're recording. So um, I want to keep this short and sweet and respect everyone's time. There are a few people on the call, but mostly we're recording this for everybody that's on spring break and not able to make it today. So thanks for those of you who are joining us. Feel free to pop in with questions at any time. Um, and let's get going. So my name is Carrie Stewart with Stewart Coaching, and I love gravel racing myself. I'm kind of one of those athletes who does a little bit of everything, but um, I've done enough gravel racing and enough road racing to recognize that there's a distinct difference between the two, and you can't ride gravel like you ride road. So um, I wanted to kind of highlight some of those differences today, and then just also give you some little tactical tips and things to help um, with the upcoming spring gravel races. So this is kind of dumbed down for beginners. So hopefully this is all things you already know. Um, and there might be, um, once we get into kind of the, the technical part, there might be a little bit of information overload as well. So don't feel like you need to take anything away from this other than gravel has its own special charm and that charm is in the adventure. And sometimes the adventure means that you don't know everything and you kind of figure it out as you go along. So um, take that approach. Um, you're learning a little bit here, but you'll just learn everything once you get out there and start riding a lot. So um, just confirming, you guys can see my screen, right? Yes. Yep. Cool. All right. So we're going to start with um, just those basics, what to pack when um, gravel riding, gravel racing as well. So same as your road bike, but maybe even more important is going to be that um, multi-tool because with gravel, you know, you're getting a lot more bumping around and jostling and your seat can come loose or you might need to do some quick repairs on the road. And that is also true for a gravel bike race. If you're used to triathlon or sometimes like um, bike touring, you're going to see sag wagons and lots of um, support out there in a triathlon. And you don't see that in gravel racing. There, of course, is plenty of people out there to keep the, the cyclists safe, but they're not there to change your tires, to fix your bike, to keep you rolling. That's the responsibility of the cyclists in a gravel race. So you're going to want to make sure that you have your multi-tool. Um, if you're set up with um, tubeless tires, you don't have to worry about having the spare tubes and tire levers, but if not, you're going to want to make sure that you bring all those items. And this little pouch picture here is what I'd recommend to carry those things in. It's a little bit bigger than you need, but I also find with gravel racing, especially in the spring, you get kind of hot and you might want somewhere to stash away some layers of clothing. So a little bit bigger of a bike pack is super helpful for that. All right. Um, you also want to make sure that you're packing plenty of nutrition and hydration. This picture was from the Del Mac where we stopped and ate pie all the time. So I had no worries about <laughs> nutrition at all. But um, with a gravel race, it differs from um, like a triathlon in that there is not going to be ad aid stations every five miles. Um, that's part of kind of the, the beauty of gravel also is that it's self-supported. So most gravel races, you carry all of your own nutrition. Sometimes there'll be an, an aid station, but they're really few and far between, and they're not exactly plush. You're going to maybe get just the few basic essentials. So carry everything. Um, so we talked a little bit about um, that bag. Um, I like to do a little top tube bag that I can put. Um, I take a ERG bar as my go-to for um, endurance events. I open the top of it and then cut it into fours and leave that open right inside my top tube bag so I can easily grab it out while I'm riding. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, sometimes I'll keep things in my jersey pocket. Um, but a hydration vest is actually a really great solution for um, gravel riding because it takes out that worry of um, your bottles rattling around and falling out. Um, and it's also a lot easier for people to drink that might not feel comfortable drinking while riding. Um, so it's going to be really important that you're continually hydrating and fueling yourself throughout your, your race. Um, like I would even set a timer on your watch to remind you to make sure you're drinking and fueling. And that's going to be a lot of reaching down, grabbing your bottle 
And if you're already feeling a little bit uncomfortable on the bike, maybe, you know, as a first timer, that hydration vest is just going to make your life so much easier. It's got a little straw, you sip right there, and you can store all kinds of stuff in it. Um, so that is your snack pack talk. Um, the next things that you're going to want to make sure that you have is basically you're going to be set up as if you're riding outside on your own, meaning like keep your blinky lights, make sure you're visible because gravel races, yeah, there's not as much traffic, but they are still open roads. So you need to follow all bike rules. They are like road rules, I should say. Um, they still apply. A lot of times you'll you'll see volunteers or maybe even police just like, you know, waving you through. And in that case, you don't have to stop at a stop sign. But if there's no volunteer there, you need to stop at the stop sign and make sure that you're safe. Um, so going back to your gear, you know, you've got your blinky lights. You are um, as visible as possible. Keep your phone on you for emergencies. But for the love, please don't listen to music. Please don't take pictures during a race just for your safety and for the safety of other people. Um, the picture the picture here is of the Garmin Varia, which I would recommend to everybody. Both Ben and I have um, that blinky light. And it's not only like a super bright light, but it syncs with my watch and it gives me an alert when there is a car approaching. So I will I can see how many cars are approaching. And if they're approaching rapidly, like the alert becomes loud and red. So it's just a great radar safety piece. Ask for it for Mother's Day or Father's Day. That should be on your list. Um, and then the final little safety tip, or maybe just something you might not realize for a gravel race is that um, the responsibility lies on you to know the route. So um, the gravel races are really spread out and there might be times where you find yourself riding alone or maybe with a small pack of other athletes. And it's gonna be your responsibility to know the route. There's not gonna be signs, um, like in a 5K, you see signs everywhere and you're always seeing people around and you. it's really easy to know the route unless you're like the winner. And I don't think I'm ever gonna experience that feeling, but I have experienced that feeling on a bike race where I don't know where to turn because it, I needed to have the map in front of me. So just print it out, throw it in your pocket, have it with you and make sure you review it um, beforehand, not only for your safety, but just so you don't end up riding a lot more miles than you need to. Okay, um, so this might, if you've been riding gravel a little bit, you've probably been playing around with your tire pressure. So this is just total refresher for you, but it is a big difference between road riding and gravel riding. Because uh, on your road bike, you might ride like, you know, 80 to 100 PSI on your tire. And in fact, kind of that old school man mentality was the higher the pressure, the faster the ride. Well, in gravel, it's kind of the opposite. The smoother the ride, the lower the pressure. So the first thing you need to do is check the sidewall of your tire and make sure that you're um, filling it up to like at least what your tire recommends. Um, but start on the low end, like I ride around 35 to 40 PSI. And if it's, um, I might drop a little bit lower if it's really like yucky out and just to give you a little bit more of that smooth ride, um, a little bit less air in the front tire. That's just a small technicality, but that can help with braking and cornering. So if you have a, um, a bike pump, like the one pictured here that um, can show you exactly how much pressure you're putting in. Um, maybe try to back off on that front tire just a little bit. And then also keep in mind that your air pressure is going to be dependent on the terrain, but also on your size. So a larger rider, uh, it's probably not going to be able to get away with too low of a tire pressure um, because it could cause a flat if you don't have enough pressure on your tire. So that's kind of going to involve just some trial and error about that. Um, so next, I'm going to kind of move into some more technical pieces of gravel riding. And I know I'm like clicking along fast. That's just kind of my style. Um, but do you guys have any questions before I move move on? Nothing. I'm not hearing anything. Okay. Not so far. Cool. Kimmy, I did have a, I did have a question about the tire pressure. 
Um, so you said 35. And uh, so by the way, this is my first time doing a gravel race in in like two weeks. So <laughs> I feel like I'm the gravel road virgin here. I've literally had <laughs> two rides and the third <laughs> ride is going to be the race. So I have lots of questions about gravel riding and I'm actually excited to be sitting on this call even as an observer because this is information that I could use. So when I had my tires pumped up, it was pumped up to 60. I've had no problems riding the last two. I am a heavier guy, like 225 pounds. Is that, I mean, is there a benefit to lowering the pressure or do you think that that 60 is good enough for a big guy like me? And I'm riding a 29er, so it's the bigger wheels. Okay. Um, if, if it's pretty hard packed gravel, um, you might be okay with that higher pressure. But if it's going to be like loose, chunky gravel, it's going to give you a much smoother ride because um, your bike kind of takes on those rocks and things when when you lower the air pressure. So I would definitely, if you can get out again before your race, um, try a little bit lower air pressure, especially if you're riding the course. Um, like when you when you hit, you know, mud and rocks is where that's really going to come in, in handy. And of course, it also just depends on your particular wheel or mm -hmm. not wheel, tire. Oh, yeah, They're yeah. all different and your rims. So check the yeah. sidewall and... Um, it seems high to me, but again, yeah, not knowing... when I saw your number, I'm like, oh shit, what, I, what am I doing wrong? But my ride has been comfortable and, and I'm riding, I'm also riding mountain bike Maxxis tires. So they're okay. not gravel tires. So I didn't know if that mattered. It seems kind of high. So I would drop it down, see how you feel, maybe ride a little bit on the lower 50? pressure. Yes, start 50. Um, but of course, read the sidewall first. Yeah, the sidewall is 60 to 65. Oh, is the is the only range yes. that you can do it? Oh, that's, well, the, that's max. the max. Yeah. Does it give you a minimum? I don't remember, but I'll look I, at the minimum. Yeah, so check and see. Stay if above a minimum. the minimum, though. Yeah, but yeah. it's like that kind of the opposite mentality of like, yeah, the harder you go, faster, but really, you want to reduce your rolling resistance by um, having lower air pressure so that you can get over all the bumps. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And it's going to be personal preference, also. All right, so now we're going to get into some kind of some technical riding skills. And the most important thing to remember is that um, this is where the information overload may happen, but you always just need to ride within your skill set and ability. So um, especially on race day is not the day to, to be like, oh, yeah, Carrie told me I shouldn't break very much. And so, boom, Carrie is responsible for an accident. <laughs> so please take all of these things as like just little ideas and thoughts and um, test them out when you're when you're riding. So the first thing is holding your line or you hear a lot about your line. And that's kind of the fun adventure of gravel versus road riding is that in road riding, you don't have a line to follow. But in gravel, like you can see these little lines on the road. I mean, this picture maybe isn't the best example of that, but you kind of pick that smooth area um, where there's not as many rocks, it might be off to one side a little bit, and you just kind of hold that line, but then, uh oh, there's a pothole ahead. And so you then have to select a different line. And, um, or if it's really loose and crazy, it, you know, sometimes that line moves, but ideally you're going to hold that line as much as you can for safety reasons. Um, and also in between the good lines is where the loose gravel lies. And that's where things can get a little hairy. So if you are going to change your line, just make sure you do it smooth and gra gradually as you go across that bumpier gravel to find the smoother gravel. Now in a race, you need to be careful that there are not people to your left or right when you're moving you know, over. If there are and they're a little ways back, you can always just kind of point to the ground and you know indicate that that's where you're going. I mean, I don't know that that's like, maybe that's me being a roadie <laughs> using my hand signals, but I think it's always best to just communicate so people know what you're doing and what your plans are. But um, the second thing is important for the race and just to kind of um, reduce the bumps you feel on gravel. And that's to just relax, keep a loose grip on the handlebars. Um, you can also kind of just every now and again, do a little piano fingertips on the handlebars just to make sure that you're not like death gripping them because what will happen is that tightness is eventually going to give you like a sore neck sore shoulders and you're gonna your body is going to start absorbing all of those bumps so 
you have a grip that's light enough that you're, you know, you're in control of the bike, but, um, or sorry, tight enough that you're in control of the bike, but not so tight that you're um, starting to strain your upper body. Because really it's your legs that do the work, not your upper body. Um, so keeping with that same thought of relaxing, um, you you want to do everything smooth when you're out on gravel. Sharp turns, sudden stops, that's how people wipe out. So you want to shift gradually. Um, you're not going to like jump up a few cogs at a time. Instead, you're going to do one at a time on gravel. Um, turn gently as well. Start to learn how to move your body from side to side and lean into your turns rather than using the handlebars. Because with a loose surface, like if you think about a road surface, you have just one thing with your wheel resistance. But for gravel, you've got the road surface plus a gravel, a layer of rock, and then your bike. So that layer of rock is going to move. So the less amount of handlebar action, the safer you're going to be. Okay. Another safety tip is to keep your eyes up. Um, someone taught me this a long time ago about mountain biking, and it totally changed everything for me. I was so focused on what was right in front of me rather than like once I started looking up, I, I felt so much safer. So the same is true for gravel. Look at your line way out ahead of you rather than right in front of you. And don't look where you don't want to go because that's where you'll end up going. So look, keep your eyes focused on where it is you want to go. Find the line that's far ahead of you, and that'll um, allow you to react that much quicker. Um, so we talked about, you know, doing everything gently. The same goes for braking. So um, when you brake, just kind of feather the brakes a little bit. You don't ever want to squeeze them real hard unless, of course, you're trying to, you know, avoid a crash. Um, because especially if you're pinching that front brake on the left side, that could cause you to go over the handlebars. So you're always gonna feather the brakes as much as possible. Um, you have a few options for your hand grips. So if you look at these handlebars here, the flat part on the flats, that might be a good spot to keep your hands when you're riding on a flat, smooth road. Um, there's not a lot of people around you. You can just you know ride and go. And then you've got the hoods out to the side where you can reach the brakes um, but you, you're still kind of on the top. And then you've got the drops down below. And that is actually kind of a scary position to be in, but it's also going to be your safest position because if it's really bumpy road and you're going downhill, you're less likely to lose your grip on your handlebars when you're down in those drops. And you can keep one finger on the brakes at all times. I'd recommend keeping that Brake finger on the right brake, your rear brake, rather than your um, left brake, your front brake. Because if you do get reactive to something, you don't want to accidentally just pull on that right brake and go ass over apple cart. It shows my age when I say stupid phrases like that. All right. Um, next thought is your cornering. So if you think about um, you know, a dirt road. Actually, I'm going to go back here because I noticed on this very first slide, you could kind of see what I was talking about. So can you see all these rocks here in the corner around this corner? So on the inside of every turn is where like the loose rocks tend to go. So when you're turning a corner um, in a gravel ride race, always just kind of take it smooth and wide um, to avoid all of that junk that's right on the corner. So um, where like road riding, you might take it a little bit more tight. You're going to safely, because remember, this is still an open road, but you're going to safely take that wide and maybe even head into the middle of the road a little bit where it's going to be more smooth um, on a gravel road. Um, another thing to watch for is where the road transitions from gravel um, into paved. It's usually the opposite where it's paved and then the gravel begins is gonna be um, very rocky and loose right at that spot. I have no idea why, it just always is. So, um, you know, just make sure that you're careful in those transitions, give yourself a heads up, um, just go into them slow with control and not slamming on the brakes, obviously. A lot of times you'll find that those transitions from paved to gravel are gonna fall on a turn 
So you might have a, a paved turn and then now all of a sudden you're hitting that gravel before you've had time to straighten out. So go slow, just be aware of um, that risk. Okay, so what would gravel riding be without these fun hills? Um, I borrowed this picture from Matt Acker with his permission. So this looks like he was riding on a great hill somewhere in Michigan. Um, so uh, that holding your line is gonna apply even more on a climb or a descent, um, especially in a race. On a descent, if you're um, if you're going down that hill and you're a little bit cautious and tentative, um, you don't want to you know weave over and over on the road because there might be someone behind you that's really aggressively descending that hill, and you don't want to you know move over in front of them. So hold your line. Of course, you don't want to hit a pothole or something at the bottom. But do expect that there is usually a little bit of loose, um, maybe even sometimes sand found at the bottom of a hill. Um, it can get wet at the bottom of a slope. So as you descent, you're going to hold your line and you're going to expect, yes, it's going to get bumpy. Um, and I'm going to expect something is going to be at the bottom. But the best thing you can do is to stay seated, pedal through the junk, stay calm, stay loose. Um, and then shift your weight so that you want that rear tire to have a little bit of grip. If you find yourself in some mud or some sand, um, keep your weight back in the saddle. So that was all downhill ideas. As you're going uphill, you know, of course, first you're going to shift your bike, but then when you get to the point where maybe you've run out of gears, consider shifting your weight back in the saddle a little bit. Um, because as you shift your weight, you're not only putting a little bit more pressure on the back tire, but you're also recruiting different muscles. So you'll get your glutes to work a little bit more if you shift around in your saddle. So don't be afraid to move in the saddle. However, if you're a roadie, you're probably used to standing on some climbs. And that doesn't always fly um, in gravel riding because you then lose that ground pressure with the back tire. So you do want to stay seated when climbing in gravel. Um, with some exceptions, there might be like a hill that is such a big pitch that you really just need to get out of your saddle. And if that's the case, um, you want to make sure that you're keeping your weight centered over the bottom bracket or basically like the area where your pedals initiate from. So you don't want your weight to fall too far back or too fall far forward. You wanna keep it centered so that both of your wheels are having um, good contact with the ground. And that is um, going to be on the uphills. Let's see, reading through my notes here. Um, descending, again, easy on the brakes. You wanna feather them. You wanna to stick to that rear brake. Um, and the drops are the safest place to put your hands, but only if you feel comfortable with that. Um, I always wear gloves when I'm riding gravel, um, just for that reason of like, I want to make sure I always have a really great grip and I just don't feel like I have that with bare hands. So, um, especially on descents is where it makes me feel safest to know I have my gloves on my hands. Um, did you guys have any questions about climbing, descending, or other technical gravel riding things? No? Okay. Okay, so now some um, tips that are specific to racing. Um, so it's really exciting when a gravel race starts. There's just like this awesome energy, and it's so fun, and you're just going to want to go out and hammer because... That's what everyone else is going to do. <laughs> but it's going to be very important that you keep your heart rate steady and stable. So don't go out too hard. Um, resist that temptation to just like jump in with that big energy pack. Um, because once your heart rate gets up there, it's really hard to get it down, especially on a course like Barry Roubaix, where there's some really gnarly hills pretty close to the beginning. So if you go out really hard, by the time you get to those hills, your heart rate is already really high and it's just gonna make them that much more challenging and taxing and just deplete you even more. So pace yourself. 
Um, use your breath to stay relaxed. So that's another way thing you can do with those piano fingers on the handlebars. You're gonna just full body, shoulders up, exhale it all out. Do that just as often as you hydrate. So deep breaths. When you um, use your full diaphragmatic breathing, it's gonna bring your heart rate down. But another thing it does is it triggers the muscles of your core, the stabilizing muscles to do their job. And that's gonna just help you be more supported on the bike and be a better cyclist. So those deep breaths serve a lot of purposes from the mental game to the physical game. Um, so we talked a little earlier about hydration and fuel. As I said, set a timer. It's so easy to just get lost in the moment and the fun and forget and like get 45 hour into the ride and be like, oh my gosh, I haven't drank or I haven't touched my water bottle yet. I mean, I do that all the time myself. So I know it happens. Um, so just really remind yourself that it's so important to keep yourself fueled up. And I would bring more than you need because you are going to go hard. <laughs> you're going to have a blast and you're going to work hard and you're going to need fuel. So bring more than you need. Um, I like to have like, a, like I said, an ERG bar. That's like more slow release carbs. And then I also bring some scratch little gummies. And that's like a quick hit of glycogen when I'm feeling kind of sluggish and low. I'll grab one of those out of my little box and, you know, right away I can feel that quick hit of energy. So have a couple different options there for fuel types. And of course, make sure it's something tested that you know that your gut can handle. Um, if you need to stop to eat, that's understandable. Try to resist the temptation of cramming a whole bar in your mouth and only eating one time. Instead, plan a few steps. It's worth the extra few seconds. Um, same thing with drinking. You don't want to have a full belly full of fluid jostling around in your stomach. So small sips are going to get absorbed by your gut better than a whole big load of liquid. Um, so small sips throughout. Um, this goes with that, you know, the line thing and just kind of knowing who's around you and what's beneath you is just being aware of your surroundings. And that's just for safety. I, um, I would recommend that you communicate with everybody around you. Um, always. I'm on your left if you're going to pass someone. I don't know why a lot of people don't do that, but I would highly encourage you. I love it when I know someone's coming and it's also a great way to just be friendly to your fellow riders and keep everybody safe. Um, typically at every race, you're going to find some big pack of, pack of riders in a little Peloton just zooming past. Um, and it's my experience that they don't often let you know they're coming and it can be kind of jarring and like, so just expect that that could happen. It's okay. Um, they're usually very experienced riders that are just moving on past. Um, but I do want you to be expecting that because it can like really take you off guard. Um, if you find that there's a smaller pack of riders that are moving just a little bit faster than you and you are experienced with pace line riding, then I would totally recommend jumping in with them, conserving some energy and, you know, using their draft to help you along. Um, if you don't know how to draft off of somebody, race day is probably not the best day to figure it out, but I would love to teach you how because it's definitely a skill worth learning. And if you're a triathlete, a lot of triathletes don't know that skill because we obviously need to keep distance. So um, yeah, talk to me if you would like to learn how to draft in the pack. It's, it, it adds a whole new layer of fun to gravel riding. And then finally, um, like I said, ride on the ride, pass on the left, let people know you're there, just safety. Okay, and then um, finally, you got your race done, you had a blast, you're gonna go hit up the beer tent <laughs> if you're at Barry Roubaix, um, but also consider that your body needs protein you need to get 30 to 40 grams of protein in within that first 30 minute window of um, post race. You also need to replenish your electrolytes and your fuel. So yeah, beer has carbohydrates. That's going to be very helpful. There's usually plenty of carbs post race, but there's not always a lot of protein post race. So especially if you're um, doing this race and then you have other things coming up that next week and you don't plan on taking recovery week, 
um, make sure that you're getting in that protein. You'll have to bring something with you. Um, and then also rehydrate very soon after your race. That's going to be like your first step towards not feeling sore and just feeling good about, about your day. Um, your bike is going to get filthy. <laughs> so make sure that you clean it right away. Um, don't let it wait. Clean it and dry it. You want to clean and lube your chain. Um, basically give it a once over. There's, um, I had biked clean my bike and they did an awesome job. And they taught me a lot of areas in my bike that I didn't realize were getting dirty or that water was accumulating because I would just take in the hose and spraying it all down. And you do need to little get be a little bit more careful than that because there are crevices within the bike that can get water inside them and then they start to rust. So um, definitely hose your bike down, but don't just go all out with the, the power washer. Um, and then finally, use this race um, as a tool to learn more about future races and about yourself and about your needs and your nutrition and what you learned and what you would do different. So make sure you take notes. And, um, you know, I'd love to share a conversation with you about your races too, and what went well and what we can work on for the future. I think that might be all I have for this presentation. Yes. So um, what, what questions do we have? Nothing. Annette, are you are you mind blown and you're ready to do some gravel riding now? That's a lot of information. I know. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. So, it was interesting though. It's um it is a lot, but I think for the people have that have ridden it before or ridden gravel, it will it'll click. It makes sense more once you've done it. Um yeah. and then I'll also of course there's this recording. I can share this presentation and I made a little handout that has you know, complete sentences rather than bullet points. So I'll share that with everyone as well. Um, so thanks for your time. I appreciate it. And um, good luck to everyone that's racing these next few weeks. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks, You're Carrie. You're welcome. Thanks, Terrence. Thanks, yeah. Annette. All right. Cheers. All right. Nice meeting you, Annette. All right.